we are here with the largest organ of the body, largest gland of the body, that is the liver. This is the liver. And uh, this is the anatomical position of the liver. Only one border is very obvious, that is the inferior border. This is the inferior border, which is sharp. All other borders are blunt. Then the surfaces of liver. When we hold in anatomical position, the top surface here is the superior surface, anterior surface in front, right surface here, then posterior surface here, and inferior surface here. All surfaces merge with one another smoothly. On the anterior surface of the liver, we find this falciform ligament. This is the reflection of falciform ligament dividing the liver into the left lobe and the right lobe. Then we have this ligament projecting from the liver. This is the ligamentum teres. This is the fundus of the gallbladder that is projecting beyond the inferior border. And this is the superior surface which is closely related to the diaphragm, then above the diaphragm there is lung and heart and pericardium and pleura related to this. And I turn it that way. This is the posterior surface of the liver. Here there is a notch on the left lobe, this area, and this is related to the esophagus and it is called esophageal notch. And next to the right of that, this lobe is called quadrate lobe, quadrate lobe of the liver. And between quadrate lobe and the left lobe, there is fissure for ligamentum venosum. This is the fissure for ligamentum venosum. And the lesser omentum starts from the depth of this. And on the right side of quadrate lobe, we have the groove for inferior vena cava containing the inferior vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava situated in the groove for inferior vena cava. And if you turn this side and see, that is the upper end of the inferior vena cava. From here it will pierce the diaphragm and it will end in the right atrium after this. And you can see some veins opening into the inferior vena cava from the liver. These are the openings of hepatic veins. We have three major hepatic veins opening into the inferior vena cava. Then the area on the right side of the inferior vena cava here, this triangular area is called bare area of the liver. It is called bare area because it is directly in contact with diaphragm without intervening peritoneum. And you can see the color difference. Where there is peritoneum, there is a shiny surface. And where there is no peritoneum, we don't have the shine. This bare area is triangular and the base is formed by the inferior vena cava or groove for inferior vena cava here. And upper margin is formed by the superior layer of coronary ligament and lower margin or lower border is formed by inferior layer of coronary ligament. And the apex is here formed by the right triangular ligament. So that is the bare area of the liver. This is the visceral surface or inferior surface of the liver. This is the left lobe. This is the quadrate lobe. Quadrate lobe is separated from the left lobe by the fissure for ligamentum teres. Fissure for ligamentum teres contains ligamentum teres. This is the ligamentum teres. This is the fissure for ligamentum venosum, which is in line with that of the fissure for ligamentum teres. Then on the right side of the quadrate lobe, here we have the fossa for gallbladder. And the gallbladder is situated in the fossa for gallbladder. Here we have pulled the gallbladder out from the fossa. So this is the fundus of the gallbladder here. This is the body of the gallbladder. And this is the neck of the gallbladder. Then the neck continues as the cystic duct. This is the cystic duct. This is the cystic duct. 
okay then this area is called the porta hepatis and porta hepatis is the area where structures enter the liver or leave the liver and above the porta hepatis here we have the quadrate lobe and below the porta hepatis we have the quadrate lobe and in the porta hepatis we have the portal vein this is the portal vein portal vein lies anterior to the inferior vena cava this is inferior vena cava portal vein is bit smaller than the inferior vena cava and separated from inferior vena cava by the caudate process this is called caudate process which separates inferior vena cava from the portal vein then anterior to portal vein we have the hepatic artery this is the hepatic artery dividing into right and left branches at the porta hepatis we can see the left branch here and we can see the right branch here which supply the respective lobes of the liver and then we have the common hepatic duct here this is the common hepatic duct formed by union of right and left hepatic ducts and this common hepatic duct joins with cystic duct to form the bile duct so this upper part is common hepatic duct this is the cystic duct this is the bile duct then the area on the right side of the gallbladder this area is related to the right kidney this is the renal area which is related to the right kidney and the area below that here this area is related to right colic flexure this part is related to right colic flexure and the area here that is related to the duodenum so we have three areas on the right side of gallbladder one related to the duodenum one related to the right kidney and one related to the hepatic flexure of colon anterior surface of the liver this is the left lobe this is the right lobe separated by falciform ligament this is the cut end of falciform ligament then we have the posterior surface here on the posterior surface we have the esophageal notch here then we have the quadrate lobe we have the bare area then groove for inferior vena cava having the inferior vena cava opening into that we have the hepatic veins these are the hepatic veins then there is a fissure here called fissure for ligamentum venosum between the quadrate lobe and the left lobe this area is called porta hepatis which has portal vein hepatic artery and its branches and the hepatic duct and its tributaries this is the cystic duct this is the gall bladder here is the neck of the bladder here is the body of the gall bladder and this is the fundus of the gall bladder gall bladder is situated in that fossa called fossa for gall bladder on the left side of that we have the quadrate lobe on the left side of that we have the fissure for ligamentum teres this area is related to the right kidney and the area below that is related to the right colic flexure